Hello everybody, welcome back to The Shared and welcome back to another episode with, um, with Project Shinobi. As you can see, what we're going to be looking at in this episode is a lower crank case, taking the transmission out, all the associated um, gubbins to do with the transmission, water pump, shaft, impeller, oil, uh, oil pump, all of that good stuff. I'm going to get it all out um, and, and yeah, and then we'll be left with a, with a bare crank case. Um, now, the crankcases themselves, what I'm aiming to do is get them uh, taken down to a place which isn't too far from me, actually, um, where they can vapor blast them uh, and they'll make these look like they, you know, they're, they're factory fresh, like they're brand spanking new, or that is the hope. Um, I just need to go down there, speak to the bloke uh, who owns the business, um, but uh, yeah, I've got um, high expectations for the finish. So, anyway, without further ado, let's get stuck in to this episode. Right then, as I said, transmission, that's what we're looking at now. Now, um, the transmission on this uh, particular bike um, looks to be in, in fine order. Now, the, the C1, C2 uh, ZX9Rs are renowned for having chocolate gearboxes, but looking at this one, I could see absolutely no evidence at all of any damage to any of the gears. Um, one thing I haven't looked at, obviously I haven't gone in depth with the, with the dogs themselves, um, there may be uh, some damage on those, but um, yeah, uh, uh, on first inspection, this one looks to be pretty good. Um, however, as I mentioned previously, we are going to be replacing this gearbox with a Z1000 unit, um, and that will basically future-proof, future-proof this bike forever um, because it's it, you know it's widely regarded to be a worthwhile mod, um, and and. The, the C1, C2 gearbox is probably a ticking time bomb, if nothing else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay them down there, and then um, in a bit, once I've finished with this, um, we'll have a look at the, uh, the the gearbox out of this bike, and I'll get the one from the Z1000, which I've already got, and we'll compare the differences, because there are a couple of differences and a few things that we'll need to bear in mind when it comes to actually fitting that gearbox into this. So, uh, yeah. Output shaft, there's the input shaft. Now in here, all the all the forks, the selector forks look to be fine. I can't, there's no, nothing obviously wrong with them. Um, they look to be okay. I uh, can't see bends on them, obviously we'll, we'll, they'll need measuring um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, that's the, uh, the two shafts removed. What we're gonna do next, I think, is remove, ugh, remove the, um, the impeller for the water pump. Now, this is a set of uh, like oil filter pliers. You, you, they're, they're handy for that sort of thing. But they're also good for holding things like this still so that you can buzz the bolt off because this will be tight. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go, that wasn't too bad. So there's the bolt. Let's get the impeller off. There we go. So they're going to go into a box. Now, what we can do here is we need to we need to remove this shaft. Um, but what we can do use one of the cover bolts from the water pump in there and use that to pull the whole assembly off. Now, the housing for the water pump and the whole shaft. There we go. Will come out as one. I'll take this bolt out. It's just a, that was just a aid. Oops. If I'd have just pulled on the housing, you see, it would have come off the shaft. If you get what I mean, um, that is absolutely disgusting with grit and grime and horror. Okay, so this little pin here is what keeps the inner rotor in place. You can see it slots in just there, like so. And then obviously when it's got when it's all bolted together it it turns that inside the outer rotor of the pump just there so what i need to do is obviously pull this apart and 
I do need to bear in mind, obviously, that uh, this is going to be have been in there for quite some time. So I'll check it for wear, but on uh, in, obviously visually it looks fine. And these will all go. These will all go into uh, one of me one of me tubs now. The outer rotor I do need to remove and it's a bit slippery and slimy come on so I'm going to come out because I can't really grip it because my, my fingers are all slippery there we go now this what I do need to do is uh, bear in mind it's orientation because it needs to go back in the same way. So what I'll probably do is put a little, just put a little mark on the face with a with a permanent marker, just to say out or something, something of, of that effect. Uh, in here, there's a there's like a couple of dowels and stuff like that, which obviously I need to recover. Um, but yeah, that's this side done. So what we'll do in a moment is we will remove the drive for the oil pump and the water pump. Um, but there's a little circlip just there, which does need to be removed. So I'll go and get some uh, circlip pliers out in a second. Um, but yeah, then what we're going to do is start with the gear, the, um, the shift linkage uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, I'll go and grab the tools I need and then we can, uh, we can move on with that. Right, what we'll do, we'll start with uh, moving the oil pump drive out the way. Um, what I could do, really do with is a set of circlips with a bit of a bend on the end, um, just to get them in here, but I don't have a set, so I'm going to have to struggle by with these ones. Which is going to be fun. As you can see. This is going to be a challenge. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this clip off and then I'll bring you back and we'll withdraw the, we'll withdraw the shaft. See you in a sec. There we go. Pretty much there. And there we go. Right, that was a pig. So there's a washer and then the circlip right behind it. And what I'm going to do is I'll put the circlip back on so it doesn't get lost, which again is easier said than done. There we are. Right, that's not getting lost. So that's the oil pump completely removed. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to this side. Um, we've got an oil um, an oil pipe here, which just takes oil to different parts uh, of the of the engine um, from the bottom here up here up to this shaft. Uh, so that needs to come off. These little covers will come off with the uh, with the bolts. Then we should be able to remove the whole of the shifter mech. Uh, along with its uh, shaft all the way from the other side as you can see from here so yeah so what we need there is one of these I reckon I reckon that's the right size yep Loctite on these, uh, some sort of yeah, there was a thread lock on it. You can see around here. 
Um, so obviously I'll uh, check the specs for that when we uh, come to reinstall. Okay, pull the pipe off. Should just be holding with a couple of O-rings really, but there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just a couple of O-rings holding it on. Um, there's a bit of a bend in it. Hmm. Okay. So now that's off, we should now be able to pull the shifter mech off all the way through, a little bit tight there, come on, there we go, and there we are, that's that. Good, okay. So now we've got the detent here, along with the shift drum. Uh, the shift drum is held in, there's a big bearing behind it as you can see, that's held in with that screw and this uh, allen headed bolt here. Um, and then we just need to remove the detent. Um, that, that screw there, that'll be a, a big JIS screw. Um, might need to use an impact driver on that to get it out, I'm not sure yet. And there's the there's the detent for the shifter. Um, there we go. So this is the end of the, sh the, the this rod here is what these two um, uh, my mind's gone completely blank. What are they called? Forks, shift forks. My mind went completely blank there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> these two shift forks, forks ride on this rod. Uh, and as you can see, it's slotted, and this, this little plate also sits inside that slot, which is what's retaining it and holding it in place. So take those two out, and the same for this one up here, which the other shift fork is, uh, is riding on. Um, yeah, once that plate's out of the way, those two rods come out, the two, all three of the shift forks can be removed and then the shift drum will just literally slide out. It's pretty, um, it's pretty, it's kind of like in an order. You have to do it in that order, otherwise you won't get it apart. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, really. Um, so what I'll do, uh, grab the, uh, I've got some big JIS um, screwdriver bits. Um, I'll go and get all of that and then we'll, uh, we'll get that sucker off. Okay. So the uh, the screw, I've got the correct size bit here. I'm gonna try and try and lean on it and get it to come out, but I'm not sure that it's going to. Oh, nah. Right. I think there's nothing. I think I'm gonna have to go for the old impact, the old impact option. Um. So what I'm gonna try and do support this the best I can. That'll probably be alright actually. And then give it a whack. And there we go. Works every time. So there's the screw, and as you can see, it hasn't even chewed it. So I'm quite happy with uh, with that. And then just the Allen-headed bolt. I would imagine there's probably a little bit of Loctite on both of these as well. If I had to 
if I have to guess. And there's that. So now the little plate can be slid out the way just by pushing it round. And now, now we've moved out of the way, what we can do is slide, slide these out with the, uh, with the shift forks. So, and the same for this one. There we go. There's the plate. then there's the shift drum just like that so that is the whole transmission out of the bike uh, and yeah that was uh, relatively simple and straightforward um, one thing I will point out here while we've got it apart actually uh, on this end of the shift drum you can see there's like a track around it with a gap in the middle and just here there's a plunger which obviously fits on that track and then if we look on the outside you can see just here that it's a sensor and that's obviously for the uh, for the gear shift for your, for your neutral light and all that good stuff um pretty uh, pr pretty simple design really okay so that is everything stripped out of the crankcase. What we're gonna do now is have a look at the differences between the Z1000 gearbox and the C1C2 gearbox. So what I'll do, I'll go and grab the box with it all in uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do a little comparison. So as you can tell, obviously I got this from eBay. Um, I had to get it from the States actually. Uh, I didn't have to get it from the States at the time. Um, it was just that the one that was available at the right price happened to be in the States. Uh, there was a few others that were knocking around at the time on, on, that, on, on eBay that they were asking for silly money. Um, but they put in the title of things like uh, C1, C2, ZX9R upgrade and stuff like that. And obviously they then bumped the price up because, you know, because they put the word upgrade, you know, you get, you get where I'm coming from. Um, but this um, American seller just sold it as a Z1000 gearbox. Um, so, um, yeah, even including the, uh, the import taxes I had to pay at the time, um, it, you know, it, it didn't work out uh, to be much different, really. Okay, so with the, um, with the shift drum itself, um, I have seen on some, some years that there are differences in like this stud uh, on the end, uh, but with this, it looks to be the same. Um, the tracks look identical. Uh, it looks, yeah, it looks, um, looks to be perfect, uh, in fact. So, yeah, there's a, been a, when I've been doing my research, a few people have said that their shift drum from the Z1000 didn't fit. Uh, not that it's a massive drama, because the, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, uh, and it's not that part that's notorious for failing, obviously. It's the gears and the dogs themselves. So I've got, um, I've got the shift drum. I've got the rods for the forks. Um, Presumably they're the same as well. Let's have a little look. Uh, yeah, they look to be the same diameter without measuring it. The difference is here that these are solid and these are uh, these are hollow. Um, does it matter? I don't know. I may have to do some measurements before I decide whether I'm going to use those or not. Again, that one's the same um, because again, it's not those that fail. It is those. Uh, I've got shift forks. Um, again, I don't know if they're different or not. They've got the same numbers on. 266, 266. Yeah, 266. This one says 267. And that one says 317. So it may be that it is... Well, it is different, isn't it? Um, don't know whether it's... Yeah, I don't know how. Um, the profile does look slightly different. Uh, but yeah, that is definitely a different number. So, but those ones are the same. So that, that, that's interesting. Okay, delving 
further down, what we'll do is, um, first off I'll pull out the output shaft. So this is the output shaft, sprocket end. Um, now, if we compare them, you can see that the gears are th the same size uh, and all that good stuff. Um, we've got a decent bearings there. But what you can tell is that the output shaft from the Z1000 is longer than the output shaft from the ZX9R. So, to that end, what we need to do is remove all the gears off of this output shaft and use this output shaft with these gears. So it's a case of stripping them all apart um, and then using these gears on this output shaft. The output shafts are, are, aren't, the, aren't the problem with these, it's, it's the gears themselves um, and the dogs. So yeah, use that output shaft with these gears um, and, and doing so you have to, there's a couple of little mods you have to do um, and, and the circlips need, there's a circlip in there and like a little washer with tangs on. Um, and again, they need to be modified ever so slightly and we need to use new circlips on reassembly. So I have to get all the circlips and all that good stuff. Uh, and then the input shaft from the Z1000, let's move that input back into the box, move that over there and bring this one down here. So this is the input shaft, clutch would obviously be on this end. And if we compare them, as you can see, they're, they're identical. So this literally just drops straight in. The only thing is obviously this washer on here needs to be put on there. Um, but yeah, th this will drop straight on um, uh, onto the crankcase and it'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's a, pretty, uh, a, a pretty straightforward mod. It's not too technical. Um, it, you know, it's been done by many, many, many people before me. I, all I've done is I've looked around the internet, gathered all the information for myself. Uh, and um, worked out what I need to do and then just bought the parts that I needed. So yeah, this is going to be a, a, a good upgrade and well worth doing while we're doing this. Um, I think when I bought this um, gearbox, bear in mind I bought it probably a year and a half ago, I reckon about 18 months ago. I think I paid 140 quid for this shipped from the States, whereas UK sellers were asking near 200. Um, so, it, you know, it was a no-brainer. Um, but yeah. That's, uh, that's what we're going to do. So what I'll need to do is get the parts I need, the circlips, etc, etc. Um, ready for when it comes to assembly. But that's going to be a little way down the line yet. Um, because obviously we've got so much more uh, stuff that we've still got to do. So what I'll do, I'll put the Z1000 one back into, the, uh, back into its box for now. And then um, I'll store all of these nicely. Um, obviously we do need that, uh, that shaft. Um, we need new oil seals, all that good stuff. Um, on the uh, on the oil pump housing, there's um, obviously an O-ring here. Again, that needs needs to be replaced. And there's a mechanical seal here. We can we can replace that as well. And it, you know, we might as well do that while we'll uh, while we're at it because if we don't and it leaks, then obviously we'll have coolant coolant and oil mixing. And as I said in a previous episode, <coughs> there was evidence of that before. So it could that could be where it's coming from? Um, who knows? Anyway, I think we're at the end of the uh, end of that episode. Really, I don't think there's anything else we can really do um, today. So I think what we'll do um, is wrap it up there. Hopefully, uh, you found this this episode relatively interesting. I know I do. I mean, this this sort of stuff, being able to upgrade something using parts from another bike, I find that fascinating. Um, you know, um, and whoever took the time to delve into that and thought, you know, what well, I'm just going to buy a big gearbox and throw it in and see if it fits. You know, hats off to them because they've um, they've taken the jump for everybody else to be able to do this. So yeah, I uh, yeah I, I salute them. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go wash my hands, tidy up, put all this stuff away in uh, in the nice boxes, um, and I will see you all for the next video. Take care, guys. Bye bye now.